Right now we're gonna do a process, which I think if you look in the industry, you're gonna see more people making rock with expanded metal. It's a diamond lath. It's used for stucco basically. At any rate, this is the reinforcement. And a lot of people will make cages of rebar to where they have a grid going this way and a grid going that way and they try and sculpt something out of a out of a skeletal frame of rebar and i could do that on the table even when i was doing bigger features my more favorite was this this is concrete mesh this is a five foot piece usually the rolls are 50 foot long 100 you can even buy this in sheets four by eight but this to me is the easiest way to make a skeletal device I can cut it and bend it and do all kinds of things with it. So I'm going to make a little granite rock, more of a round, with this uh, on the table. And we're going to... Okay, so now I got me a perfect circle. And it's just the right size to stick on my table. So now, where the two ends meet, I'm just going to bail and wire those together to keep them together. Okay, so right now I've got a pretty nice round footprint and I don't really care for it. So in order to get that to eliminate, I can do two things. First of all, the, the walls are very plumb and we've already talked about that. We don't want that, you know, so I can basically cut this and then bend it in to where you're taking the two pieces and you're basically doing this and making that curve under. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a deviation. Just now it's more of an oval as opposed to a circle and that's not a big departure from the from the shape but it's it's a start now i want to create this to where it kind of cups in underneath so as i said i'll take and i'll cut this and, and put it wire it together all i did was i created two little hooks in there and now i'm going to push them together until they and i only need the one really but i got the other one now you can see that that that's kind of curving under now which is really what i'd like We've got us a skeleton. And again, in this stage here, if I don't like the shape of this, I can come away from it with the expanded metal to create isolated uh, pop out. I can also cut it and rewire it and do all kinds of things, but that's the bulk shape of our rock. Okay, I've just made a few little bobby pins here that we'll stick through and then once they're through, we'll twist time together. And again, we're gonna stick them in from the outside out and twist tie because we can actually lay this thing over, we can actually get it from inside for most of it. Okay. This is a piece of expanded metal. I've had it sitting outside the shop for years. Uh, I'm not really big on expanded metal rebar and lath construction. I have it. It's not something I'm really all that crazy about. Okay, now at this point, what I'm trying to do is just to lay down like this area right here has a, a lap and I'm just trying to tighten that to the surface to where it's not going to be raised up. I want a unified surface that doesn't have any lips on it. Right now we're leaving the stage of formation of the bulk shape and we're going into mudding. So now's the time to critique this. You don't leave this section until you're happy with your bulk shape. Okay, so the expanded metal has been covered one time. I'm gonna wait just a little bit and then brush it in. All the mesh is pretty much, I don't see any of it anywhere sticking out. Not real happy with the, the vertical uh, shape of the sides, but I can alter that with some styrofoam mud or, but right now that's the first coat. Next tomorrow, we're just gonna coat it with about an inch of regular mortar, no fiber, no glue, no mesh, nothing. The expanded metal is gonna be the reinforcement for this product and it'll be tough. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, so mud is really green. This is from yesterday, and uh, it's been about 12, maybe 14 hours since I made it. It's still not cured. It's very green, meaning it's very soft. But I'm gonna move this rock, and I don't fear it breaking at all. So I just kinda wanted to show you, the first of all, the lightweightness of it. One coat is very strong, and then this bottom is ridiculously thick. Again, the mud got through on the bottom because I was pushing it. And I'm also not liking the vertical 
edges here. And I have just a little bit of styrofoam mud that I have left a bag of it. So I mixed it up. What I want to do is just kind of throw it in some areas here to kind of create a little more of a round on that lower edge. So, and then I'll coat over that with the, with the uh, mortar mix. Okay, I just threw the mud on, but I just wiped down the table. And I was thinking, while it's, I mean, this is real wet. You don't want to do it when it's real wet because you get a lot of paintbrush marks. But being as we're going to splatter over, I don't really care. You want this to set up some is usually what I want, but not hard because then you can't trowel it back and forth. Remember, with the paintbrush, you're trying to trowel the surface and compact and consolidate it, making it a tighter lay of mud. rock is all dried it's still green what we're going to do is uh you know splatter it with the with the granite texture like i did the rest of these but okay that's got it coated now i'm just going to let that sit uh in the shop and then tomorrow we'll sand it down and hydro seal it all right so the granite texture the splatter uh, that i did on this is dry real rough and uh <clears throat> So what I generally do is I take a, uh, a disc in my hand and I basically lightly sand it. Just like that all over. And then I clean it off because you don't want that loose sand on there to do the next step. Okay, so I let the bonder dry and I'm going to paintbrush on one coat right now of the hydro seal. Let that dry. Probably tomorrow I'll paint another coat and then I'll stick it out there on my rock wall area. You don't want this hydro seal to be too thick. The viscosity is about like house paint. If you get the mud thick, the, it's not like house paint, then you can leave brush marks. If you put it on too thick, you can leave brush marks. And if you see some brush marks, the thing to do is to paintbrush the material out to where it's thin. But at the same time, if I do see paintbrush marks, I daub it with the paintbrush and you won't see any paintbrush marks.